Hi, this is Ralph, and I wanted to go over how you would set up a third-party email client with your internet service provider's uh, email server information. This would allow you to use some email client software, such as uh, Windows Mail, Outlook, uh, Outlook Express if you're using an old XP system, or Thunderbird. Thunderbird happens to be a very good email program, one of my favorites out there. So, this is an alternative to web-based mail. Uh, installed email clients tend to give you a little bit of faster action and some a uh, little bit more robust features. So I stopped over at Ben Broadband's website. They're a uh, local internet service provider, a pretty popular one. And I just wanted to show you some of the information you would need first in order to set up an email system. And in a little bit, I'm going to set up, I've got a Windows Vista machine here, and I've never set up Windows Mail uh, live uh, on it, so I'll set that up in just a moment. But you need some information about the email server in question. Particularly, you need its uh, you need its email server addresses, and there's generally going to be two. There's going to be an incoming server address, either POP or IMAP, and then there's going to be an outgoing SMTP. So I went to Ben Broadband, local internet service provider, and they really don't make this information easy to find. But I found that if I do a search for email server. It is one of the first options that comes up from their support FAQ. Yeah, that's trying to print it. I don't want to print. Okay, the incoming server name should read exactly as follows. Pop server bin broadband dot com and the outgoing server should read as follows SMTP server dot bin broadband dot com. Now because of the popularity of web based systems like Gmail and Yahoo and Hotmail, uh, Using an internet service provider's email system is probably not the most common, but it's still it's an option for you. You can have a separate email account through your internet service provider usually. Now they have a POP server, and the downside to POP is that it actually downloads the emails to your computer, taking them off the server. So if you have an email program at home and you download all of your emails from your internet service provider, you wouldn't be able to go to your work email and then check those emails out there. That's where IMAP is definitely an improvement. IMAP behaves a little bit more like your web-based email system because IMAP leaves the messages on the server so you can access them from multiple computers and that's really what I use for mine. I use Outlook at work, um, at home I use the uh, email client that comes with my um, iPod Touch or I use Thunderbird on one of my computers and I use these different email clients because they're faster action um, but I also still have a, a Gmail account and a Yahoo mail account so this is the information you would need. Here's the incoming or POP server address and they also have an outgoing SMTP server. So you could check with your internet service provider to find out what theirs are. Now I'm going to use the school's email system to test it out since that's really what your assignment is most likely going to use and I can run a live test and see what it looks like. So I'm going to jump over to the COCC's website and I, I know that they use they have a IMAP server information so I'm just going to do a search for IMAP server. Here we go. COCC IMAP email client settings. Outlook Web Access is a web-based email system. You don't really need this server information for that. But this would be useful information if you wanted to set up Outlook, the actual full you know, full-fledged uh, personal information management program or Thunderbird or Windows Mail or something like that. So the, here's some of the critical information. There's the IMAP or incoming server information. I'm sorry. The um, and uh, SMTP server for outgoing. And notice they're the same server address. And they also let us know some other information. You generally won't have to enter these port numbers and things like that, but marking things as secure uh, is generally necessary. So here's some key information. I'm going to just go ahead and keep this up. And I'm on Windows Vista, so I'm just going to click my little Windows Start button down here in the lower left. It's kind of off the recording. And I'll just type in the word mail. And it's going to launch. Here we go. I don't know if you can see this here. Windows Mail is not currently your default email program. I use Outlook on this computer. The default email program is used whenever you say, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't want to make this my default program, though, so I'm going to say uh, no. Okay. And this is a really generic view of the inbox. I have not set it up to work with my school email account. And you want to keep in mind that although you can have five different email programs and they all look different, you set up an account with them pretty much the same way. 
So not knowing how to do it in here, I'm just going to go to the file menu and I'm going to look for places where I can edit accounts. Um, I see file, new, folder, contacts, that's not quite it. Let's see, tools, ah, tools, accounts, that's a good sign there. So I can jump over to accounts and I see there's an option to add an account. Let me do that. I'm going to create an email account, that sounds good. Display name, I'll go ahead and put in my name. Next, my email address. I'll use my COCC email address. Next, um, incoming email server type. I want to use IMAP because that keeps the messages on the server. Um, then I have to have the incoming information. So let me jump back over to this and I'll just do a copy paste. So there it is mail2.ad.cocc.edu. IMAP incoming. Let me copy that. Notice that the outgoing is the same, so I won't have to recopy. And let's jump back over here. Paste, right click and paste. And I think it also gave me some other information on the directions at the school website. Outgoing does require authentication. So, outgoing server requires authentication. Let me check that. Next, email username. Okay, that's my email username. Let me put in my password. And I'll hit next. Oh, by the way, if you're doing this from a school lab computer or any kind of public computer, you know, just to complete an assignment, don't have it remember your password. Just do the setup, and you'll be fine anyway, because when these computers, when school computers reboot in the lab, they do uh, clear themselves out. Let me go ahead and click Next. All right, you have successfully entered all the information required to set up your account. To save these settings and download your email folders, list of messages, click Finish. Sounds good. Okay. And let's see, I don't know if anything popped up underneath that, but basically it's letting me know that I now have an account here, Mail2. So there we go. Let me go ahead and close this. And it's not giving me information automatically, but I see the inbox as a drop down. So let me go to this. And I see I'm, I'm looking at the default inbox that it created, but I now have an account on here for my COCC server. You can actually rename that a little bit more descriptive. Let me go ahead and click on that. And it's letting me know what things I want to import. I'll go ahead and keep all those checked for now. But I realized there was something in the uh, basic setup that we didn't specify. SSL is secure connection. We didn't really specify that in the uh, settings. It didn't really prompt us to either. So let's check this out. I'm going to go back to Tools and Accounts. I'll go to my school account that I just set up. And let me go to the Properties for it. And I'm just going to kind of look through some information here. Type the name by, so I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, school account. Oh, that's fine. Go to servers, IMAP, addresses are good. Here we go, log on using secure password authentication. Um, that actually might be okay for now. Let's go ahead and click connection, security, advanced. Okay. Here we go, outgoing. This server requires a secure connection. We want to check that. This server requires a secure connection, SSL. Want that. IMAP, anything on here? All right, I think we might be OK. Let me click OK and see how this works. Yes. Oh, that's a good sign. I have an inbox item on here now. Open that, and here we go. So this is my inbox, and these are actually some school emails uh, in my inbox. So it is actually working now. So got my school account, and I do now have my inbox live. So it was a little bit quirky, but ultimately you can get third-party email clients set up as long as you have that server information. So this one's a little bit different. Uh, this is Outlook Express, also called you know Windows Live Mail, I think. Actually, that could be the name for their web-based one. But once you get these things going, then you can use this email system for your checking your email. You might think, wow, that's not really that user-friendly. But Outlook is a really nice one, though. Um, this is just the free email that comes your, with your Windows operating system. So you might give Outlook a try at home getting it set up. And like I said, Thunderbird is a fantastic email system if you give that one a shot.